today I want to bring you someone very special, Jamie Cardozo. He's an expert with over 10 years of experience that helped over a dozen architects and interior designers to resolve problems on very tight deadlines. And today I want to ask him about his personal approach of helping those architects and interior designers. All right, so we are going to give him a call on Skype and see how he helped those people to achieve and troubleshoot their V-Ray problems. Hello. Hey, Hi there, Jamie. Alex. How's it going, man? Yeah, yeah, not too bad. Thank you. And yourself? You good? Yeah, yeah. Nice uh, Sunday morning here. And uh, yeah, yeah. Nice and, su nice and sunny. Nice and sunny in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How you been? Everything's good? Helping a lot of uh, people lately? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I've been involved in quite a few uh, big projects. So uh, j just producing some, um, you know, some interiors and exteriors for clients. And uh, yeah, you know, troubleshooting at, at the same time as well. Yeah, I heard we had uh, actually got one email from uh, one of our students from this workshop saying he knows you from you know back in the day you helped him uh, to resolve uh, some some issues by writing a script which is pretty impressive I don't know much about scripts but you know if you help him by providing a scripts and uh, I mean I think this is a pretty high level of you know development in uh, in that field everything related 3ds max and writing scripts is I think it's pretty complicated yeah, well, I had a bit of help as well, but uh, I was, um, I just wanted to help him first. Yeah, first. yeah you know this guy, I'm... right, from Australia. Yeah, 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 yeah. He contacted me. Basically, he saw like one of my tutorials online, mm -hmm. and then and then he took the script that's there, and then he developed it a little bit further. Oh, uh, wow, cool. Yeah, yeah, he made it a bit like proprietary just to his workflow. Mm -hmm. It was based on something that I'd put out out there for people to use freely. Nice. So uh, let's do some interviews. I got some uh, some questions yeah. regarding uh, you know the ways you help different architects and interior designers solve their problems. So why yeah. don't you screen uh, share screen with me? Yeah. So you could show some stuff and uh, yeah. I can ask some questions. All right. Okay. So let's start. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's start. Um, well, the first question, I guess, will be what is the most common thing that users ask you to help with? What is like is the most common mistake that you're bumping in and the help that you got to help the users? Well, for me, one of the most common errors I'm often asked by the users is how mm -hmm. to eliminate blotches. Blotches. You know, blotches in, yeah, yeah, in artifacts and yeah. yeah, in interior scenes. You know, such as this, mm -hmm. and normally, you know, the answer is is almost exactly the same. That you need to increase the interpolation samples there. Yeah, to make it smooth. But if you go too high, yeah. you're probably gonna start losing detail, right? Yes, but but to uh, override that, I normally just uh, um, add the um, the internal ambient occlusion mm -hmm. within uh, within V-Ray. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's how I normally um, get the detail out. That. Just you, you add like art manually. I mean, not manually, but you burn the ambient occlusion with your render. Yes, yeah, that's to, correct. To yeah, get, to get back the detail. That's that's a nice trick. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I normally I normally don't go higher than seventy. But there mm -hmm. that's a certain case where you really have to go high. Yeah. But uh, yeah. But like yes. user comes with what, with like 50, 20, and then he gets those bloaches, and then they yeah, gotta go yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. But with a new version of Vero, you know, three point, from 3.0 um, and upwards, mm -hmm. uh, you don't get those bloaches anymore, but all the previous versions of Vero used to get loads and loads of bloaches. Right, yeah. And in other cases, sometimes it's just uh, a matter of uh, increasing the, um, the irradiance map samples. Mm -hmm. If you increase the radiance uh, map samples as well as the uh, the light cache right. samples, that that normally solves the problem. Yeah, I can see you put something with probabilistic lights. Uh... Oh, oh yeah, that's another 
big problem that's been happening since V-Ray 3.0, mm -hmm. because by default, normally that probabilistic light is turned on by default, mm -hmm. but that's just to make the renders go a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the final render, users normally forget or don't know about this particular function yeah. that makes the render to be grainy. So just at one point, that was, for me, one of the most you know challenging things because I was not aware of that. And it mm -hmm. took me four or five hours to find out that it was actually just that new function from uh, V-Ray that made the... Um, you know the renders to be uh, very uh, grainy yeah even so even that increasing... actually leads us to the second question what was the most complicated Challenge. and challenging is... right so yeah. you're talking about yeah. the probabilistic light yeah okay so yeah well, i mean i i see yeah my students now also they're getting they're using pretty much good quality settings but somehow uh, Sometimes it's still renders, grainy. Yeah, coming up very okay. grainy, and even though they go really high with minimum yeah. sub, uh, maximum subdivisions on adaptive yeah, DMC, it, it yeah. still doesn't it's help. Still yeah. And that is the problem: the probabilistic mm, lights. Okay. Okay. Just just by ticking there, you you uh, yeah you solve all the graininess um, um, problems. Oh, nice! That's a cool trick. A lot of users will be interested in uh, yeah. knowing yeah. that option. Yeah, I mean, and the worst, they're not aware, the worst, right? Yeah, no, no, no. And the worst thing is that with the V-Ray 0.3 mm -hmm. and upwards, now uh, you have like the expert mode right. and a normal mode expert. So you need to click three or four times right. before you get the expert mode in order to get this setting because ah. it's, it's actually very, very hidden. So it's hidden, yeah. Okay, so you can't really actually, f you need to click three times in order to get to that option and deactivate it. Exactly. Uh, uh. Sneaky bastards, <laughs> they make yeah. our life complicated <laughs> instead of making it easier. Yeah. <laughs> and and right. so far, so far, at least like for the past year and a half, that's been the most challenging thing I've worked on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I've started, I've started like troubleshooting from five until about 11 in the evening to find out about that. Mm -hmm. So it, it was quite daunting because I, I've tried every trick in a book, so to speak. Yeah. And nothing was working and it was just by accident I found out about this yeah. and, and you did solve it yeah cool cool hey I remember you were saying you you wrote some uh, script to do like 30 images or something like that yes to render uh, them out. Yeah. was uh, that uh, also uh, something complicated yeah it was very complicated uh, basically um, I've started out I was asked to produce 30 verified views mm -hmm. of a, a project called Newton Bot. This building is already built in Newcastle. Mm -hmm. Sorry, uh, no, uh, yeah, um, in Elephant Castle. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, so for you to get a planning permission by the authorities, you need to get uh, verified views. Mm -hmm. So the developers have chosen 30 verified views. Wow. And uh, obviously they're. And they've only had 30 days to get those images out. Wow, it's like image a day, even like more. Yeah. Some days yeah, you gotta do two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the worst thing about that is that, you know, verified views are a quite complicated a, a process because you need to hire a surveyor to go on site and get a survey point. And then per picture, per photo that was taken, uh, you had a, in excess of 10 um, points. And those points will actually will be taken into Max mm -hmm. and then you uh, use the the, the, um, the Max camera in order to make sure that everything matched and then do the lighting and texturing and so on. Wow. So imagine if you had to do that manually for every single shot, it would be quite daunting. Yeah. yeah. So that's when uh, uh, a colleague of mine, uh, in collaboration with myself, we've created this script mm -hmm. to enable the process a lot quicker and easier. Mm -hmm. So all you do, you take the survey from the surveyor. Mm -hmm. So per camera, you had in excess of 10 or 12 uh, um, survey points. Uh, all the points normally come in an Excel file. Yeah. So you get all those points from an Excel file, and then the script would actually go 
and automatically pick those points and put them into into 3D Max mm -hmm. and create the camera for you. Oh, nice. So you, you with the script, you actually created automatically 35 cameras without going and matching every camera yeah. manually. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Cool. Wow, that's a really big time saver. Definitely. You, everything was automated apart from matching the lights. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. So that's yeah, so that's how I've managed to overcome that big hurdle. Mm -hmm. So just manage, managing the lights, was that something easy to do? or? Did yeah, uh, it was easy to do because each photo taken by the surveyor mm -hmm. actually came with um, the time and date. Mm -hmm. So with that data, I was able to go in, into 3D Max mm -hmm. with a daylight system. Oh, you use a daylight system to set up the lighting. Nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. lighting, yeah. So it was quite easy from then on. Yeah, you just put the, the, the region on the map, you yeah, select yeah. Yeah. what day of time, yeah, and yeah. it puts the sun automatically. Yeah. And when you have yeah. all the points in Excel, which, yeah. which probably following, you know, true north, you get yeah, everything, yeah. everything exact. Yeah. Yeah, with everything exactly match. Yeah. yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, go ahead. Tell me more stuff. That's that looks pretty interesting. And uh, one of the best uh, and most uh, um, one of the best like projects I've worked so far. Mm -hmm. And interesting at the same point was the uh, the St George Street. Yeah. Which is the one that I've mentioned to you earlier. Uh, it was this one mm -hmm. and you got uh, featured in some magazine right for this yeah 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 uh, initially the background was a a, a, um, a photo mm -hmm. montage basically the building was just this area here that you can see mm -hmm. uh, I've posted that in CG Architect and then 3D World magazine had seen the image mm -hmm. and they, they really wanted to know the process behind it mm -hmm. Uh, I haven't, yeah, so, uh, and then we've agreed that I was going to show the process and then they've asked me what was 3D and what not. I told them what it was and they've asked me if I could possibly model the entire shot so it'd be even more, uh, uh, you know, just to wow the, the readers. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was the challenge for me, really, to integrate everything into 3DS Max, which you can see in the background there. Yeah. You used so you any got... any any image, te uh, you know, for textures? Did you took the image, the photo, yeah, I... and like produced yeah, I've used... textures of it? Yeah, uh, I've used um, Google Maps mm -hmm. to go into into certain areas, and also I went to the site to take pictures of it. Oh, uh, okay. So inside the Windows, I've I've, I've used the um, uh, boxes mm -hmm. with lights, but they're not visible to the camera. You know, to emit, uh, in order to emit like um, different values of light mm -hmm. inside. So that's why inside the buildings you have um, different colors and, and different intensity of light. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, a skylight system. You know, just to get the bluey hues on top of the rooftops and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was challenging and uh, it was uh, it was surprising, obviously, because uh, it, you know the viewers really really liked the final result. Yeah, I mean it's crazy, it's huge. Uh, yeah, I can't yeah, imagine but... how you can model something like this from a photo. You know? Yeah, yeah, it looks yeah. massive. How long did it took this whole thing? Uh, it took about a month, month and a half. Month and a half, just but but just the model, just to get the model through. With you mean the, to render with all the lights, you know, because I I'm guessing post production could take maybe two, three, four, five days at the max. But you're saying you did like the whole month, maybe in a yeah, week. Yeah, yeah, a month and a half. A, yeah. a month and a half modeling, texturing, and rendering. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of investment. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, one, yeah. Uh, for one person, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was um, it was a one-off, but <laughs> hopefully I won't have to to do something as massive as this. Uh, these days I prefer to to work on um, on smaller projects, mm -hmm. which focus on areas like 
you know, such as this, for instance. Mm -hmm. You know, just focusing there and just, you know, trying to get an image looking really good without having to model lo large spaces. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but I wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind doing something like that, but I try and avoid them as much as I can. <laughs> yeah, well, most of the time architects probably will come, you know, with different project sizes. Uh, small project sizes, I guess it's more photorealistic aspect that needs to be achieved. And yeah. I'm guessing bigger scale is probably will be more modeling and getting, yeah, yeah. getting the model right. Yeah, yeah. It, it depends really what the client wants. Because if they want something done within two or three days, I would advise them to just go and take a helicopter shot mm -hmm. and then I'll I do the like the photo montage between 3D and the background photo. Mm -hmm. But if they want to model some imagine if it's like a master plan and they need to um, imagine it's a massive area that needs to be rebuilt. Yeah. A renovation, for instance. Obviously in that particular case you need to model everything from scratch. Right. But yeah. in areas uh, in projects such as this when it's just the a, a small area there's no need to spend a month and a half remodeling unless mm -hmm. unless it's like a challenge or, or it's for a magazine such as you know 3d world yeah so that was the, yeah, yeah tell me how how many people in general you think you helped over over these years and how, how many years you've been doing this i know you have 10 years of experience but probably you know teaching and assisting was it a last lab the last five, six years that you've been doing this? Yeah, I would say for the last seven. Seven? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've started off while I was at university, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. During my course, mm -hmm. uh, uh, on the second year, I was a little bit more advanced than you know the majority of um, my colleagues. So I've just started doing on one-to-one -one basis, and you went from there, really. Mm-hmm. I've started my blog and things like that, and uh, you just it's no it snowballed from there, really. Yeah, um, about your blog, you have something that's uh, very interesting with a lot of uh, information, right? Yeah, and, yeah. And articles in it. Uh, what's the, the name of it? So we let uh, let the users uh, visit and check it out. Yeah, if you were to type Jamie Cardoso, mm -hmm. you'll definitely come up on the blog. Yeah. So it's called um, Jamie Cardoso iPhone Mentor mm -hmm. dot blogspot dot co dot uk. But this, even though the URL reads Mentor I got um, information for both V Ray and Mentor Ray. Mm -hmm. And uh, if users want to come here, they, all, all they need to do is just to type in, you know, the subject matter that they're looking for. Say, for instance, if you're looking for V Ray, you just type in V Ray. You look up. And uh, it should actually give you all the results, all all the posts on V-Ray. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's quite a few of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got a list of them. So you just say scripts, for instance. If mm -hmm. you had to type in scripts, yeah, you've got a number of them in here. Um, nice. Yeah. All right. So, um, are you ready to help users on a hourly basis? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I, I look remember, forward to it. Yeah, I remember we were talking about setting up a V-Ray SOS platform so you could help uh, students and architects and any even studios, all people that are dealing with tight deadlines to come up, you know, uh, with uh, and asking you to troubleshoot and solve their problems. Yeah. And um, I'm setting up now a forum it will be ready yeah. soon in a few days will be out yeah and um, we're probably gonna break it into hourly basis where users can choose if they want two hours or one hour or maybe even five minutes you know if a problem is yeah. a quick solution yeah, yeah. we should probably yeah. provide this option and let users you know get yeah. fast and quick um, uh, response yeah response. yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, also, we're going to have like private forum that uh, going to provide the option of uploading images and print screens and I don't know, different error bugs, whatever they're getting. 
Yeah. Um, so we would see what exactly going on. Plus option with connecting to, uh, to viewers, to users by using yeah. join me in like this one right now, or we can also do a team viewer where you, you actually connect to their computer and troubleshoot yeah. the problem yeah. from home, yeah. but in their local station, which is, which is, I find pretty, pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set something up and, yeah. um, definitely we're going to release more, uh, cool stuff and more trouble solving, uh, <laughs> solutions to, uh, yeah. V-Ray bugs and V-Ray 3ds max, uh, problems. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, definitely it's a, it's a good, uh, way of helping people, helping more people without letting them waste, waste their time and yeah. trying to go and, you know, spend hours searching for a solution when they can come into one place for, and find, uh, yeah, for a small amount of pay, get really professional help. Feedback. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I can actually remember myself years ago and even, and even like for the past five years, every time I needed you know, to troubleshoot something, I would spend 30 minutes searching for an answer, going from blog to blog, website to website, and more often than not, I wouldn't find anything. Yeah. So, so imagine if you are in a tight deadline, and as they say, time is money. Imagine if you can just go to one place and get, the, you know, a, a very good feedback and find exactly what you're looking for yeah. in, instead of spending all this time. Yeah, because right now there's so much stuff out. I mean, earlier, 10 years ago, when, when we were starting, there was no information whatsoever. But now exactly. I think the problem is there's too much information. Yeah, yeah. And you don't, too know, much, who, yeah. Yeah, you don't know who's the expert anymore. So yeah, you kind exactly. of get lost, you know, trying to go through video and video and video. And then yeah, some might. guy mumbling, some guy <laughs> speaking some other language that you don't understand. Sometimes it's yeah. just music with no, you know, fast forward. It goes so fast. You have to click and go back, you know, yeah. so many times. Yeah, there's so much uh, stuff right now. Everybody trying to, you know, do their own stuff. But it's good to have one professional spot when you get just expert to be with you yeah. one on one and provide the full support with yeah. the most, uh, you know, limited amount of time, quick and fast, get the stuff yeah. done and boom, you Hopefully move on and everything's yeah. Uh, yeah. getting in place and no And the worst, yeah. and the worst, and the worst thing about YouTube is that they don't even realize that spending say 20 minutes every day looking for answers. If you put, if you add all that together, he, he, he probably spend half of the month just searching for answers right right and then imagine like having one one place where you can just go yeah. and get it all sorted out yeah but if you even calculate it over the year it's probably going to be yeah. a couple of months <laughs> yeah. you know like yeah. You're, yeah you're spending so much uh, time yeah 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 searching, searching right and answer. watching videos and all kinds of things yeah yeah definitely, definitely. all right cool deal man um give me a few days uh, yep. I'll set up uh, all this uh, service with all the yep. forum support and all the different purchase links of how many hours uh, the users want to uh, book our services. And uh, yeah, we'll launch it. We'll take it from there. Yeah. Oh, definitely. I'll, I'll, I can't wait for that. Cool deal. Well, thanks a lot for uh, giving me those insights. Thanks a lot for the tricks oh. and uh, the useful information. I hope the users will like it and share it with, uh, with the community. And uh, for everyone that watching this video, stay tuned, V-Ray SOS is coming your way. So uh, right. wish you a happy rest of the weekend. And um, you hope, too, mate. Yeah, hope to see you uh, with us soon. Oh, by the way, I'm going to uh, let you in so you could give some comments to our students in the interior workshop. They will be Definitely. very glad to uh, hear from uh, your pr professional expertise. Now uh, we're finishing the whole thing up. So um, this is where your feedback will be, I think, most valuable on uh, the last stage of uh, finishing the workshop. Thank you very much for the invitation. I really yeah. appreciate that. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot. And uh, stay tuned. We'll talk soon. More uh, cool stuff coming your way. All right. Cheers. Thank uh, you. Cheers.